Ah, it's not always sunshine. <laughs> but this one I saw coming, so the question is just how much wind will it be in it. Ah, it's a little bit frisky here now. <laughs> This is not a how-to or how you should do, it's how I do video. And it's about sailing and uh, sailing tactics and strategies. Because how I do things might not work for you. And we have different boats. Join me as I'm sailing around the world on B3, a Bavaria 55 cruiser. It's difficult to come around the cliches uh, that uh, you should definitely know your own limitations and it's also important to know your boat's limitations. It's quite a distance up to my sail. <laughs> So I have different set of challenges, but also a different size of boat, make give different numbers for reefing and stuff like that. But what I'm going to walk you through in this video is basically based on the previous episode when I sailed through this rough weather. Uh, it's a little bit frisky here now. <laughs> I decided to just uh, go with the Genoa for a while and see if uh, or how this develops. Sailing with the Genoa only is often a good idea to ride out a squall or some wind gust. But in a storm this strategy can also be the fast track to send your rig into the ocean. Yeah, I could make a video like, oh, it was a terrible storm, but I, <laughs> I don't do that kind of thing. The difference between a 45 and a 55 is significant in a storm. Also, uh, I know my boat. And some of the limitations when it comes to heavy weather sailing, I just want to share with you because you might not think about it. On B3, I have a furling Genoa that I can adjust to the size I want. And to a certain level this works, but not as well as you might think. And I will illustrate this in a few seconds. My first step is to reef down my mainsail. And normally on a standard configuration you have two reefs. And the second reef is what I try to illustrate here. When I ordered a new mainsail in Spain, I asked for uh, some custom, custom options. Because uh, my experience was when I needed to reef my sail, I really needed to reef. So I asked for uh, moving uh, the reefs higher up, meaning the sail will be smaller when I take it down. But I also asked for a third reef, uh, because that would be my storm strategy reef. Heavy weather sailing from broad reach to close reach with this configuration is not a very good idea. Even though B3 points surprisingly well even with a tiny rest of the Genoa, this is dangerous sailing. So the main challenge uh, with a furling sail, even if it's on a cutter stay, is that as you can see here, it goes far up. In heavy weather sailing, I want the sail as far down as possible. This is where my storm jib comes to play. And the benefit of my storm jib is that it don't have a big roll in front. Ideal, I would want this as close to the mast as possible. Meaning a cutter stay helps a little, but in reality not that much. I want this as close to the mast and center of my boat as possible. The reason is optimal balance in heavy weather sailing. So when you furl in, uh, the thickness here will create turbulence in front of your sail. And this turbulence will make your sail flopping. And it's very, very difficult to trim your sail when it's above 50 knots. And this flopping sail is the fast track to kill not only your sail, but take your entire rig down. So unfortunately, in some situations, the only thing to do is to furl it in to protect your sail and rigging. I do have a storm sail that's designed for this kind of sailing. However, getting my big Genoa down alone in already strong winds is a no-go. And this is the big flaw with my solution today. Because my storm sail used the same track on my only four stay. So yes, a cutter stay would be nice. 
However, my dream setup has for a long time been this. And even a cutter stay, and of course already on a sidetrack here, why not share my dream about replacing the furler and stay with something better for my code as well. This solution today is not good and quite dangerous as it tends to furl itself out. That would be a winner in the tear down your rig competition in 50 knots win. And also it looks like I'm gonna get some rain so I think I'm gonna prepare. I'm uh, gonna come wind and rain, I think. Well, that's definitely a front system. Um, it looks like it's rain over there. I did a last minute uh, decision before it uh, went dark. Now it's pitch black. So, yeah, it's uh, rarely a very good sign when it's uh, like a black line uh, in the front system that means normally quite a lot of wind. Sometimes I wish I was listening to myself, and this would be the time to not drop the mainsail but replace the Genoa with a storm sail and just reef down the main as it was getting stronger. Because this configuration I can fight my way through whether you don't believe exists. And of course this would be the optimal solution from 55 knots and up. For now I don't have this feature, so when it's above 50 knots wind my sail plan look like this. This is my third reef and no Genoa. B3 don't point very well with this, but she is still maneuverable. Unless I have had time for prepare, I would use my storm jib as well until it needs to be furled in. Depending on waves and wind direction, closer to 60 knots of wind, this is my sail plan. And yes, I have experienced above 60 knots with B3. What I forgot to tell you in the previous episode was that this was my configuration for more than one hour when it was at its wildest. I was basically sailing on her mast and rig only. I know my boat and her limitations as I just walked you through. I also know how dangerous the wind is from this level and up. So I basically went into safety mode with the margins on my side. Prior to this, before it reached 50 knots of wind, I was looking at options to take cover at new. At this point, I did not know how bad it was going to be. And because I did not expect this much wind over time, I had even dropped my mainsail prior to this. Only sailing on my Genoa, which is normal, only riding out some stronger winds. In this case, however, it was a huge mistake. I should trust my instincts as I was thinking about dropping the Genoa and replace it with my storm jib. Knowing this is a no-go and the fast track to kill my rig, I was basically left with two options. Turn around up against the wind to hoist the main at the third reef or just go bare pole when it's at the worst. Especially when expecting this is a local and short-lived thing. This strategy does not work on every yacht, hence the fact you will rarely hear me say this is how to. I know my boat and here is the key to my confidence, knowing my limitations and even the different options. Heaving two in this kind of winds is actually quite dangerous. And this is the reason why saying this is how to can be so wrong and even contribute to fatal consequences. First of all, heaving two strategies have some basic principles. However, the result and effect variates from boat to boat. Not to forget the sail plan. Remember, we are not talking about 40 knots of wind here. I'm talking about serious weather. But most important is the factors that will tear down your rig. It's also valid in a heave to situation. Meaning if you don't have the sails for this exercise, it's not a good solution. In my situation, heaving two in wind gusts above 50 knots with my configuration would 100% guarantee send my rig into the deep blue. This is more about the sails you have and less about what make your boat is. This is easy to forget. What makes a boat a nightmare at anchor may be the same things making her a dream to sail. b freeze hull design almost works as a surfboard. Meaning she always turn around and wanna go sailing, even without any sails up. However, this also makes draughts or drift anchor in a traditional way not so efficient. I've tested several options and variations with quite different results. So while dreaming about this solution, 
I was running downwind with this configuration for an hour or so, buying myself time to figure out the next step, and even to wait it out if it would pass while still making progress, more or less in the right direction. I had even lashed down my main to avoid it to fly out. Sounds like a mistake, but I still believe it was a good decision, even though it made alternative to get mainsail with a third reef more difficult as a last resort. Remember, my Reef 3 is designed and even tested for this purpose, so I still had options and alternatives if needed. B3 also have a strong engine and the capacity to go up against the wind even in these wind speeds. Also, if needed, I could even run the engine on economy speed to assist for a better angle running downwind only on the mast. And if you ever need a good argument for a strong diesel engine, this could also be something to think about. I could run like this non-stop for 10 days. So even though it may look very easy uh, when I'm sailing through a major storm and I don't look terrified or scared, I don't like to make any drama. I could easily make like, whoa, this was a terrible storm, the worst weather I ever seen, but it's not truth. I've sailed in worse. And, uh, what I want to point out is there is some very important takeaways uh, from the previous episode that I would like to share with you in this episode. In the previous episode I told you guys several boats were dismasted, and of course among those there was also one Bavaria. But was this due to being a Bavaria or because of other criteria? After all, 30% of the boats I see around me is a Bavaria. Meaning it not only dominate Anchorage, but obviously also on various statistics for obvious reasons. And that boat, that's quite funny. They are actually from my hometown. <laughs> not only Norwegians, but from the same place. Let there be no doubt there is difference in strengths and designs in modern yachts. This is key to know and also to know your boat's limitations. And as I point out, the sail plan. Following the best advice from online sailing experts would this master be free in this storm. Not because she is a Bavaria, but due to user error. After all, she is well maintained and I have just proved my points here. Like this boat I saw in Tonga later. It's not a Bavaria or other mass production brands, yet it has lost its rig. Obviously these sailors are skilled sailors. I can tell only by looking at the jury rig they have made. So we can definitely rule out lack of experience or knowledge. And with this kind of knowledge it would surprise me if lack of maintenance was part of it. But I never talked to them. I managed very well through this violent storm, even with a Bavaria. Not because I'm a genius sailor, but because I take maintenance seriously, and have been practicing with my boat to learn and understand her limitations. This is what I wanted to share with you, and I really hope you found this valuable. Thank you so much for watching and all your support. A special thanks to all my patrons that makes it possible for me to upload these videos. Much love from me on Be Free.